God was with him. And God is with us here tonight. Hallelujah. And I think I want to go over to Luke 4, 18. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence tonight, Father. Luke 4, verse 18. The story here, Jesus, they, they gave the scroll to Jesus to read. So he, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus is saying. You know what? The Spirit of the Lord is here. And in the churches in Pennsylvania. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. To set at liberty them that are bruised. I mean, sickness is a type of bruise. Hallelujah. So if y'all just can't come in agreement, I'm going to pray for Bill Hakes. So Father, thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you that you want to heal. It's your will to heal Bill Hakes. Thank you, Father. We just command that oppression to leave, that infirmity of the flesh to leave his body. Thank you, Father. Start now and continuing when they lay hands on him tomorrow. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was thinking, well, I don't think it'd be right to go on without, if there's anybody here who has need of prayer, to raise your hand. And we'll pray in agreement with you. Hallelujah. What I was thinking is that Emily over here has raised her hand. If anybody else, like some people just want to gather around them, we'll just pray, lay hands on her. I'm not, I don't think we need to know exactly what, what it is. It's an oppression. That's what it said, right? Oppressed of the devil. Sickness has to leave. If anybody else here needs hands laid on them, lift your hand and we're here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you that your word, you sent your word, Father. And Psalm just said you sent your word to heal them. Thank you, Father. That's your word. John also says your word came forth. Your son, Jesus, his stripes he bore on his body is for our healing. Thank you, Father. I speak healing. I command these oppressions to leave. Infirmities of flesh to leave our sisters in Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. He said deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. I just speak this over anybody. If you have any issue in your eyes, there's recovering. Sight being restored, hallelujah. Sight being restored. And here Jesus said, and heal the brokenhearted, Father. And I thank you that you're in the brokenhearted business too, of healing brokenhearted. If there's any relationships, Father, that has caused brokenhearted, Father, I thank you. Your presence is here. Father, I thank you that you comfort, not just comfort, but strengthen and bring peace, because you're the king of peace, the prince of peace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So be it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but thank you, Father. <clears throat> I guess at this time what we do, one, we lo- one way we love God is how? By loving one another. So we greet each other and have a little time of meet and greet. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Church of the Word. I just thought I would just say a little bit on 
in addition to what Lee said, um, Pastor Dale called Jay on Tuesday, and we had known that Pastor Bill wasn't well. Um, when Prophet Bob was here, he had gotten messages that said that they were, he was in the hospital. I don't know, he stubbed his toe or something, and then it got infected, and anyway. So we hadn't heard, um, after Prophet Bob went home, we hadn't heard what the latest was until um, Pastor Dale called on Tuesday, and um, he is out of the hospital. They ended up amputating his toe, Um, and so he's out of the hospital, but I guess he's still not doing well, and I'm not sure all the what all is going on. But um, Pastor Dale was just gathering people and Armada members, and um, and said, you know, we he really feels like he, we we need to have a special services this weekend. And he was like, you know, Pastor Jay, you're part of us. He's like, that would be awesome if you could come in. Like, you know, I know this is late notice, and. So Jay's hardly off the phone before he's online looking for tickets. And um, so he left this morning, and he'll come back Monday. They're going to have a service tonight and then a service tomorrow morning. And Pastor Bill is going to be at the 1030 service tomorrow morning. And they're just basically going to teach on healing and have a healing service. But um, one thing I wanted to say about Jay, you know, when Pastor Dale called, um, you know, the holy thing to do would have been to say, well, I need to pray about it. That would have been the holy thing to do. But um, Jay didn't need to, you know, when, he, when you're submitted under somebody that you trust, you know, there's, there's sometimes you don't need to pray about anything. You can just go ahead and you trust that, in this case, Pastor Dale heard from the Lord right? And so, you know, he's just automatically looking for tickets. And, you know, one thing that Jay has done well is he has been obedient right away. If he would have prayed about it, if he would have thought about it and said, okay, how's this all going to work out? How's this going to, what are we, how are we going to handle this? He could have talked himself out of it. Or his wife could have helped him. You know, there's always that, too. You know, don't ask me how I know. Um, But one thing he has done really well in his life is he has been obedient right away. And so I'm just like, you know, there's sometimes when you're submitted under somebody that you trust, you don't need to pray about it. You don't need to think about it. Just be obedient, and then everything will be taken care of. For example, Pastor Ron is teaching tonight, preaching tonight. We're so thankful. Thank you so much. You know, it's such a blessing. Um, We had finances come in for the plane ticket. So, you know, God knew before the beginning of time that this was going to go on and be happening. So, um, glory to God. Anyway, so as far as announcements go, um, there's time change tonight. I don't know if you all remember. We fall back. Um, Tomorrow evening uh, is going to be youth meeting here at 6.30. And Monday at noon, we'll have our prayer. Jay should be, I think he flies in at 10 10 something. Um, Tuesday evening is Bible study. And for those of you that are taking LTS, next Saturday will be our LTS um, morning, 8.30 here at the church. So, Thank you. Well, hallelujah. Have a regular off- tithes and offering tonight. Um, see where I was going to go here. There we go. Psalms 512. Psalms 512. I was going to talk about favor. How about the favor of God is on our life. If we'll believe it. Psalms 1, Psalms 5, verse 12. So here it says, For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. How's this for us? Because we're the righteous. It says, For thou, Lord, bless the righteous. If you're a new believer, 
But if you're a believer in Christ, this side of the cross, then you're the righteous. Because He has made us righteous. It's not about our works righteousness. or It's through faith righteousness. So with favor wilt thou compass Him with a shield. He, he puts a shield around you of favor. I want to also go to Exodus 3.21. Exodus 3, verse 21. Exodus 3, verse 21. So this is, of course, when they were getting ready to leave Egypt, and God told them to get out. And here's verse 20 says, I will give this people... Favor in the sight of the Egyptians. This is the Israelites. I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. So when you go, when God gives you a word to do something, He's not going to send you empty. Like I've heard, there's cliches, I guess you could say, or sayings that say, where God leads, He feeds, and where He guides, He provides. And that's true. God wants us full and overflowing. I have Luke 6, 38 here. It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. He wants to be full and overflowing. Not just to hoard it to ourselves, but to be a blessing, to be able, in 2 Corinthians, say, so we have to give to every good work or so that we get to give. I have a few more scriptures here I want to go to. There's one I found in Job. I thought I'm going to share that one about favor. Job 10, 12. Now, this is, I'll, I'll be honest enough there, I'll say it's kind of picking it out of context, because Job is wailing and bemoaning his situation, and basically he's thinking that God brought everything on him and putting everything on his life, but here in Job 10, 12, it says, thou hast granted me with life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. You know, that's a true statement for us. He has granted us life and favor because of what Jesus did on the cross. It says, in thy visitation, Jesus is visiting us. I mean, he wants to. His visitation is for us. And he preserved, it says, and hath preserved my spirit. We have Psalms where it talks about he restores our soul. I just want to look at this, a couple more. It says here, it's preserved my spirit. So let's go over to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1.13, talking about our spirits. Ephesians 1, verse 13. It says, In whom ye have trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When you received Christ, He sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise, like a vacuum pack. I've heard it explained, or like it's sealed. It can't be your spirit can't be dirty or corrupted, or our souls might, our minds, will, and emotions, but our spirit can't be. It's perfect in the sight of God. And Ephesians 4.30 kind of says the same thing. Ephesians 4.30 is, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Another scripture that says you're sealed because of what Jesus did, not because of your own good works. Or... Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's what I was going to encourage you all with. So... I forgot to ask if anybody wanted an offering envelope. If you need one, Jared will run you one.
Curtis, you can go ahead and pass offering. So what we'd like to do here is get up, lift our um, offerings to the Lord in a sign of worship. But Father, thank you. We worship you and we glorify you with our tithes and offerings, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just pray over this, this offering that you would bless it, multiply it, that you'd multiply it back so that the giver has more seed to sow and bread to eat. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm uh, very, very honored to be here tonight, and I want to thank Pastor Jay and Church of the Ward for giving me this privilege. Thank you very much. And um, um, I'm amazed at Pastor Jay's humility and his quick obedience. I think that's wonderful. We have a wonderful example. And praise God for that. Uh, let me go to God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your love. We thank you for like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ who are sold out for Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. And uh, uh, we just are so grateful that the word will find place in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So am I a little loud? Do I need to... All right, you're going to take care of me, all right, because I do get a little loud, and I apologize for that. Uh, I've been doing a series on uh, the new birth, the death, burial, and uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and, and so I don't want to just jump in here and scare you to death, so I want to do a really quick review I don't want to scare you to death with all the paperwork you got tonight, but I'm going to go through that so fast you're not even going to know it was there, you know. So, uh, uh, but uh, I, I think if you just come in and you don't understand these things, it, it can confuse you. Um, the purpose of this series is the Lord puts on my heart constantly. He's constantly pressing in on my heart that we can do what Jesus did, we can do greater things. And if we're not walking in what Jesus did in greater things, then, then we're missing it. Because it's not God's problem. Will you guys say amen to that? If we're not walking, if we're not doing what Jesus did in greater things, it's not God. It's us, okay? And, and so, just, just trying to be honest with you here. And uh, the, the death, burial, and the resurrection, we're, we're talking about the death right now. The death, burial, and the resurrection. And, and the death... Uh, is, is difficult for people. Uh, you, you know, Paul says, uh, I crucify my flesh. And Paul says, I die daily. And you hear many speakers who talk about, well, you have to die. But not many people know how to do it. And not many people know how to tell you how to do it. And so uh, this is the d dilemma that we have is that there is no lack of the Holy Spirit. We got to say amen to that. There's no lack of the Holy Spirit. So the problem is there's something in me that's hindering the Holy Spirit from flowing through my life. And, 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 I, and if I don't know what that is, I, I will never get free of it. And, and I will not become a conduit so the Spirit of God can flow through me. Because it really doesn't have anything to do with Ron. The more Ron can get out of the way, the more Jesus can do his work. The Holy Spirit can do his work. And so I found over the years that this is an area that a lot of people don't talk about it's because it's negative, but it's not negative if you understand it. Uh, and so, um, long story short, let me try to take us through the review real quick. We're talking about dying to our flesh, and last week what we talked about is why... We need to die, okay? And in Romans 6, 11, it says, in the same way, count yourself dead, okay? Now, that's very important because, see, I've been speaking in a wrong way. What I should have been saying was is that you're already dead. You just got to believe it, okay? You're already dead, but you have to believe it. He says in Romans 6, 11, count yourselves dead to the sinful nature, but alive to God. So you have to count yourself dead to the flesh, 
but alive to God. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. So I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. But So I've already died. I've been crucified. I died. I'm dead. You're seeing a dead man walk around, okay? You're a dead woman, okay? I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but it is Christ that lives in me. Galatians 5.24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified. They have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and its desires. So they've already put it to death, the passions and the desires, okay? So what... What have we been put to death to? What have we died to? Well, uh, Galatians 5.24 says we're dead to the flesh. Romans 7.4 says we're dead to the law. Galatians 6.14 says we're dead to the world. So I'm dead to the flesh. I'm dead to the world. I'm dead to law. The, The world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And I'm dead to them. And if you believe that those things are controlling your life, that says you don't believe you're dead. Say amen to that. I mean, really, right? If you're saying, oh, woe is me, the world is controlling me, then you're confessing that you're not dead. Okay? And so we live by faith, not by works. Amen? So you're not supposed to, our work is to believe. Say amen to that. So we've got to learn how to believe. And that's what I'm understanding more and more. And what happens is, if you're, there's more flesh than there is spirit, your believer is contaminated. Your believer is contaminated. Okay, we'll talk about that more. Um, so, how bad is the flesh? Okay, real quickly. Our flesh continually lies to us and deceives us. Our fleshly nature, our sinful nature, our old crucified flesh... Lies to us and deceives us. See, this is a problem, is that the flesh is dead only if I believe it's dead. Will you guys say amen to that? I'm going to use an expression that, that to me is a really good word picture. Have you ever heard in the world someone say to someone else, you're dead to me? Have you ever heard that? What does that mean? That means you may be alive, but you ain't connected to me. I am dead to you. You have no power over me. You have no influence over me. That's what it means to count yourself dead to the flesh. Amen to that? So is this making sense? So the flesh is a liar. So why in the world would you listen to a liar? Amen? Uh, I cannot, number two, I cannot trust the flesh of others. If if my flesh will lie to me, my flesh will lie to you. (laughs) Isn't that right? Isn't that right? So I can't, not only can I trust me, I can't trust other people. Other people's flesh will molest me and make me do things I don't want to do. That's why Pastor Jay, if he wasn't listening to Pastor Dale, he would have prayed, right? Because he wanted to make sure it's the spirit, not the flesh. Uh, Our fleshly nature will never get better. Our fleshly nature, we can train it, we can discipline it, but it will never get better. Jesus did not come to fix our flesh. He came to crucify it. Amen to that? He came to crucify it. He didn't come to fix it. My flesh, number four, is incapable of consistently making right choices. You know where the flesh will molest us is that our flesh can make right healthy choices, but that same flesh will make evil, wicked choices. Number five, our flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth. If you feed your flesh, if you enable your flesh, your flesh will get stronger and stronger. If you enable the spirit, the spirit will get stronger and stronger. Say amen to that. I want to feed the spirit. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. The flesh or sinful nature is the source of all pride. And God resists the pride. You know, this is, this is one of the areas that's really bothered me over the years is, is I've understood the charismatic movement, the full gospel, is that we make proclamations about our new identity. But what I found out is that people that are making those proclamations about their new identity, if their old man is not dead, they're feeding pride into the old man. 
Have you ever noticed sometimes charismatic people are the most prideful people you can see? You say, well, I just know who I am. Yeah, you are, but there ain't supposed to be no pride there. Amen to that? And see, so the flesh deceives the truth. He will use the truth and make you ineffective because what does God do with the pride? He resisteth the pride. He resists the pride. Okay, so uh, hallelujah. Verse number seven, I'm, I'm, I got to get through this. When we are immature in the kingdom of God, the voice of the temporary world is louder. So when you're connected to the flesh, it becomes louder than the spirit of God. And number eight, uh, the fleshly nature will never lay down. It will gladly rule over your life and destroy you. Now, I want you to think about what I'm sharing here. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will never force his will in your life. But the flesh would be glad to. Think about that. Think about that. The, the Holy Spirit will never force its will. But the flesh would be glad to rule over your life. So that's why we, we got to die to that and get over that. And so uh, trying to, I'm going to get to the sermon real quick today. In Romans 1, 6, 16, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. So the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is the power of God for everyone who does what? Believes. So our believer has to be working completely. It has to be uh, uh, working properly. The power of God is in believing the gospel. If you believe in the scriptures according, if you believe in Jesus according to the scriptures, it says rivers of living water will flow through you. If you believe, okay? Matthew 14, I want to just give you a picture of believing. Matthew 14, 27. It says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, this is when, I, I didn't tell you, this is when Peter is, is uh, uh, Jesus is walking on water and, and they're figuring out that it's, it's Jesus and Jesus is speaking to them. He says, don't be afraid, take courage, it is I. And then he says in verse 28, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Okay? So, what we see here is the believers and the faith walkers. Did you know that the disciples believed? They believed. Every one of those disciples in the boat believed in Jesus. But only one had faith. Because faith is the one that gets out of the boat. Will you guys say amen to that? Faith is the one that gets out of the boat. Um, the boat represents those who have faith in the natural. The boat represents those who have faith in the natural. The faith walker is the one who has faith in the supernatural. Is there anything in, G in Peter that made him walk on water? Was there, did, was there anything in Peter that gave him the ability to walk on water? See, this is cut and dried, really. I'm just being honest with you. You know, if I... Believers believe in the natural and the supernatural. But when you have faith in the natural and na faith in the supernatural, that makes you double-minded. We have a tendency to turn... It's easy. It's a com my, in the boat's comfortable for me. Amen to that? And when you get out of the boat, what are you going to have to do? If you're going to step into the supernatural, you're going to have to take risk. You're going to have to take risk. The faith walker gets out of the boat. They leave the natural behind. 
and see the supernatural manifest in their lives. You know, it's, it, you know if, if I had never, and my wife had never laid hands on the sick, we'd never seen them healed. We'd never seen miracles if we never laid hands. If I'd never cast out demons, I'd never seen demons flee. If you never exercise the supernatural, you're never going to see the benefits of the supernatural. See, you're going to have to get out of that boat. So we've been called to be faith walkers who are willing to get out of the boat, to step out of the natural into the supernatural of kingdom and walk in the power of God. So I've got to die to the natural influence of my flesh. And I've got to walk in the supernatural kingdom of God. In Romans 3.16 it says, Therefore the promise comes by faith. So the promises of God come by faith so that it may be by grace. It's free and it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Amen? Act. Faith is in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus finished it. It's done. It's finished. There's nothing you can add to it. Say amen to that. It's a finished work. Therefore, the promise comes by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all. So the new birth is the finished work of the death, burial, and resurrection. Faith in the new birth is that you're already dead, you're already buried, and you have been raised up in Christ Jesus our Lord. Say amen to that. See, that's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I died with Christ, I was buried with Christ, and I was raised up to reign with Christ. You have been raised up to reign in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Romans 6 tells us how it works. He says, or don't you know, 6-3, there you go, we're really doing good. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We died. We were therefore buried with him. So we were buried. It's a final work through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life, resurrected life. Amen? The death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 6, 11 tells us how it works. He says, in the same way, count yourself dead to sin, to the sinful nature. Count yourself dead. See yourself dead to the sinful nature. But see yourself alive to God in Christ Jesus. But alive to God in Christ Jesus. So you count yourself dead, but you count yourself alive. Therefore, do not let the sinful nature reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God of those who have been brought from death to life. You've been brought from death to life. And offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness, for sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. So we're not under law, we're under grace. Now, Ephesians chapter 2. So I want to just look what Paul says about the new, new birth. 2.1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions. Ephesians 2.1 You were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you, were, you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time. So we've all been there, amen? Well, the gratifying the desires of the sinful nature. Now, listen to that. Cravings and of the sinful nature. Gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature, following its desires and its thoughts. So the sinful nature has cravings, it has desires, and it has thoughts, right? And he, and he said we're dead to it. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of death. So when we live by the flesh... We're objects of wrath. But because of His great love for us, God, 
who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. So God, who is, who is rich in mercy, even in my sin, made me alive, made you alive with Christ, even, even when I was in my sin, even in my transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ. And He seated us with Him in the heavenly realm. It's a finished work, brothers and sisters in Christ. You are seated in the heavenly realms with Christ right now. Tonight, you are there. You are seated with Him. But see, you, is it by, it's by faith. Amen to that? A lot of us hadn't even thought about it all week long that we are seated in heaven. That we're reigning from heaven with Jesus. That's who we are. Verse 17 of chapter 4. We'll get through this real quick. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated. Now listen. They're separated from the life of God. So if I'm living out of the fleshly nature, I'm separating myself from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. The flesh produces a hardened heart. Produces a hardened heart. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity, with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of Him and were taught in Him with accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old man. Amen to that? You were taught to put off that old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And to put on the new self. To put on the new self created to be like God. Think about that. Put on your new self. And to be created like God in true righteousness. Do you not have the holiness and righteousness of God? Say amen to that. Isn't that cool? Put that on, he's saying, okay? Now, Ephesians chapter... 5 and verse 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all darkness, righteousness, I mean goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will... I love what he says here. Think about this. Wake up, O sleeper. He's talking about the old nature. Rise, Rise up from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. So the more there's less of me the more of Christ can come up through me. Be very careful then. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Are we living in evil times? We are living in evil times, aren't we? Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine. Don't look for fulfillment in this world. Don't look for fulfillment in this world. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. But instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you see There has to be a putting off of the flesh for the Spirit of God to freely flow in my life. Okay? And we'll never walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit unless that's true. Let's look at uh, Titus 3 real quick. Real quick. He says, uh, verse 3, At one time 
We too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. He's talking about the passions and the pleasures of the flesh. You know why I hate talking about this? Sometimes just talking about it activates it. (laughs) You know, that's why it's bad, really. Uh, But at the same time, we can't be foolish and not accept responsibility for the sinful nature, okay? Uh, He goes on to say, hating, uh, he says, we lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, praise the Lord, but because of His mercy. Okay, so we're saved by His grace and mercy. I'm dead. I've been buried and I've been raised up. See, that's the new death, new life. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. And then let's go to Colossians 3 and, and, and we'll, close, we'll tie this up. Settle it up. Colossians 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. So where are you at? You raised up. You are raised up. You know, it, it, that's where we live by faith. Since you have been raised up with Christ. What's he talking about? You've been seated in the heavenly realm that you are seated in Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Don't set your mind on earthly things. Set your mind on things above. He's saying you are to have a supernatural spirit consciousness rather than a carnal fleshly consciousness trying to pay the bills, trying to deal with life, and trying to deal with all the struggles in life, is connecting us to this world. This is not my home. Amen to that? Okay, so that's what, he, that's what he's saying there. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. He said, listen to what he said. For you died. It's a done deal. Say amen to that. You died. And your life is now hidden. With Christ in God, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Now this is important. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is your life appears. You know what? Christ cannot appear if there's too much of you. If there's too much of me. Christ can't appear. There's too much of me. Listen, listen to the next thing he says. Put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Put it to death, your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, pure lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these in the life you once lived, but now you, want, but now you must rid yourself of all such sayings as anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language in your, from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self. Since you have taken off the old self, past tense, which is with its practices, and have put on the new self. You've put on the new man, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of the Creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew circumcised or uncircumcised, Barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God has chosen people, holy, who you are God's chosen people. Holy, you're holy, you're dearly loved. Clothe yourself with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spirits. Isn't it interesting that being filled with the Spirit is very connected to praise and worship? Isn't that wonderful? Singing psalms and hymns and with gratitude. Gratitude is very important. With gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So, we live in the Spirit because God has given us His righteousness. We, We are not trying to be made righteous. Say amen to that. So these things I'm reading are not about us becoming righteous. Because we're already righteous. Amen to that. It's a finished work. But if those things are in my life, it's evidence that I'm, I'm plugged into the wrong power. I'm plugged into the wrong source. I, I'm in the boat instead of in the spirit, okay? Now, the thing is that people don't realize this. But how do you, how do you believe? How do most of us believe? Does anyone in this room have daily decorations that they declare every day? I do. Does anybody? Am I? I know I'm not. Do you all have declarations? Yeah, you declare things. You you do that to believe. I'm I'm the righteousness of God. I'm forgiven of all my sin. I'm a new creation. The old man is gone. The new has come. I'm decreeing all these things over my life. Well. You have to die the same way. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. See, when was the last time you counted yourself dead? See, and so what I found out, you, you don't have to do this at all, but I, I'm going to just share a tool that, that, that works. I, I, I've used it for a lot of years, and I've seen a lot of people. I've seen people with a lot of problems get free because they get disconnected from their flesh. Now, I'm going to go through this declaration real, real fast. And you don't have to use this. But I, if you don't use this, I would encourage you to come up with one. Use fine scripture and declare your flesh death. Amen to that? You said that makes sense? Okay. Now, I'm going to warn you. This is what I found out. The people that make these declarations, their flesh gets mad. Their flesh gets made. It does. And, and you know, a lot of people will take this thing and throw it down. Because their flesh is throwing a fit. I'm just being honest with you. Amen to that. Okay? So, so I'm just warning you, if you want to throw it in the trash can, it's because your ugly flesh is raising its head. Because you know what? The flesh loves being in control. And when you start, when you start identifying the enemy... When you start identifying the lies and the deceptions, what do you do when you identify a lie? You guard yourself against it. I'm dead to that. Amen to that? Well, that's all we're doing. And and this is what happens is the Holy Spirit comes in and joins you. The Holy Spirit, because you're you're getting yourself in alignment with Him. So let me just run through these real quick. I cannot trust my sinful nature or flesh that has feelings and emotions and passions and desires. You mean I can't trust my flesh, my passions and my desires? <laughs> Please don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Can I cannot trust my sinful nature, my flesh, my feelings, my emotions, my passions, desires, self-will, and think it is know-it-all. The flesh thinks it knows it all. I have and I can deceive myself. My flesh is a voice for the temporary world that is louder than the voice of the kingdom of God. The voice of my flesh, my sinful nature, is a manipulator, a controller, a liar, and will not relinquish control unless it is dead. Therefore, I count myself dead. I count myself dead to my fleshly nature. I cannot and I will not trust the voice of my flesh, my evil and wicked sinful nature. Others have and can deceive me, therefore I cannot and I will not trust the voice of sinful nature of other people. Satan has and can deceive me by using the voice of my flesh. My flesh will never get any better, therefore I count myself dead to that nature in Christ Jesus. 
My flesh is incapable of consistently making right choices. I can, I can train my flesh, but I can never under any circumstances trust it. I trust in the Lord and His voice only because He's always faithful and true. I lean not on my own understanding, but I trust in the Lord with my whole heart. In all my thoughts and actions, I submit to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my ruler and the authority of my life. I continually renew my mind with the Word of God. I refuse to be wise in my own eyes. Rather, I fear the Lord and shun evil. This brings health to my body and nourishment to my bones. I refuse in the precious blood of Jesus Christ to take one step, one thought, or even one action without submitting it wholeheartedly to the Lord. Any area in my life that is under the control of the voice of the flesh, I now totally surrender over to Jesus Christ. I now walk and live in the very presence of Jesus Christ at all times, listening to His voice calling out to Him. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The Christian life is totally dependent on walking in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. My time with the Lord is my doorway into the Spirit and maintain a Spirit-led life. It is a moment-by-moment, moment, an hour-by-hour, hour, a day-by-day choice to walk in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The desire of my sinful nature is to rule over my life, to be my master. I am dead to the passions and desires of the flesh. I refuse to focus on the passions and desires of the flesh. I choose to shun the passions and desires of the flesh and seek God's righteousness and do His will. I take captive every thought and I make it obedient to Jesus Christ. My focus is on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith. Anything that will ensnare my heart and passions and my desires, dragging my love and affection and obedience. Did you know there's things in your life that are constantly trying to drag your love and affection away from God? And if you don't identify them, if you don't see them, you're going to continue to let them distract you from your relationship with Him. Well, I'm not going to read all of that. I'm going to stop right there. I think you guys have been very generous by listening tonight. I just want to give testimony that whatever you denial you use, you will be deeply, deeply blessed. You will find areas in your life, at first, they're going to get ugly because they're going to expose themselves. But then what you're going to see is that as you put those things to death, you're going to see that you have freedom, that, that you see things that other people don't see because you've taught yourself to die to that old man because we've been, and, you know, and I haven't even got to uh, the burial. Ne you know, next week we'll start that. But the burial and then the resurrection. But a lot of people get kind of uh, uh, frustrated or discouraged because they, they're doing everything they can to read in the book. And they're meditating on their new identity in Christ Jesus. And yet they're not seeing the power of heaven flowing through their life. And I'm just being real honest with you here. If, until you stand in agreement with who you are in Christ, that you're dead, you're a dead man. God can't flow through you. Does that make sense? Is that making sense? Amen to that? Let me close with prayer, if I could. Father, we just thank you for this word, and we just pray that this word will find place in our heart. Let us not take lightly what we heard tonight. Let us become dead to this world, dead to the flesh, and, and dead to the law, so that we can be alive to God in Christ Jesus through the power of your wonderful Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for that, and we love you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ron. I really like this list. It's, it's convicted me tonight because I just had to think, you know, I used to get up, I mean, I, I shamefully say this, I used to get up every morning and say, I have favor with God, I have favor with man, and I have good understanding. I realized just now looking back, I think it's been a while since I really, well, this is a whole list. 
whole list of stuff we could tape on your mirror in your bedroom or somewhere and pick one. And, and if that's in your area, if you see it in your life, pick one and start reading it. I just want to read this scripture here. This is the last one he's got here. Say, Proverbs 35, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make my path straight. Thank you, Jesus. I guess we are dismissed. He prayed for you. <laughs> that was an awesome night. Y'all have a good week.